Welcome back <laughs> to the show. Today I'm joined with two very, 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 very special guests. We have the usual Mo Vlog. I feel like at this point I'm a co host. You're a co host, man. I, so, I wish we signed. <laughs> yes, sir! <laughs> we made it. And, and we also have the man, the myth, the legend. Mr. Billionaire himself, Saigon Yalchin. Woo! Put in some applause, put in some applause. <laughs> so another episode of Ahmed Talks, <laughs> where we do all the talking. <laughs> and I do all the listening. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Guys, this show is about getting advice. You know, I'm on my way, I'm, I need advice from people around me. These two have done so many successful things in their life and they've made so many achievements that instead of me listening to them alone, I'm sharing it with you guys. So, here we go. Today, Saigon <laughs> is of course, of course the sponsor of today's video. And that's how Ahmed upgraded. <laughs> that's why the sound quality is so good. That's <laughs> why everything is so good today. That's why everything is so nice. Sell right. any car. Thank you for sponsoring. They didn't sponsor. No, we're kidding guys. But obviously. But they should have. We have, they a, <laughs> we have a special <laughs> episode, so we had to upgrade, you know? We had to upgrade. Alright guys. How did it look before? Today, today we <laughs> don't want to know. You don't want to know. But listen, guys, we're we're budgeting. We're on, we're on, we're on the way up. You know, it's gonna become something big. Right, in the no small talk. That's okay. all people are here for. All right. Let's get straight into the news. All right. So the battery's running out. Right. Yeah, the battery's running out. <laughs> battery's running out. <laughs> no sound. Battery. <laughs> yeah, we got it. Let's we'll do it. Come on, it's just uh, three businessmen having a chat. <laughs> One and a half. <laughs> One and a half. One uh, future, inshallah, businessman, yeah. maybe ten percent chance. How the eyes? The eyes is amazing. All right. All right. First things first. We're today we're gonna discuss five millionaire daily, but for a second we'll call it billionaire, but you know, yeah, millionaire. five millionaire billionaire habits daily that you do daily that can help you along the way. Let's do one each. Going starting with Saigon. I start? Yeah. Action. Okay. That's the habit. Oh, that's the habit? Action, yeah, exactly. So you have to have a bias towards action. You know what that means? Yeah. You rather do it than talk about it. So there's only two types of people, right? Yeah. The ones that do things and the ones that talk about it. Right. Okay. That's it. Action. So next. I even heard like some people they say like once you talk about something. You feel less wanting to do it because you feel like everyone already knows like your plan, so you feel like already happy about. It. I guess it's as if you've done it. That's why it's best not to talk about it. And just or you build up social pressure and you actually do it. Yeah, that's how. It you work either way. Fitness. That's how you do fitness. That's the, a lot of the time. That's fitness. When everyone exactly. gets shape, you tell everyone, "Yo, I'm starting it." And then if you don't do it, yeah, I guess it works in both ways. Um, I'd say okay, actions one. I'd say preparation. You know, a lot of people go into stuff and I know a lot of times people say, okay, do something, which is right, like do it, but if you want to get to that next stage in it, like once you've already started doing it, in the future, let's say for videos and stuff, you need to now start preparing better stuff, you know? In business, I guess you can prepare for the next big move, so preparation, I guess? Yeah, and mine's kind of similar to that, leading off from that a bit, uh, planning, you know? That's preparation. That's preparation. Okay, mine That's is more preparation. Like, okay, okay. Don't steal my line. <laughs> okay, mine, mine is more like having goals, you know? They say without a goal, you can't score. So, mine would be like having goals. And when I say goals, I don't mean something like I want to be successful or I want to be rich. You need to have exact goals, how much exactly you want, you know? You yeah. need to have it like in your vision, you know what I mean? Exact numbers. Next. Let's just skip through mine as fast as we can and get to the real people. You're <laughs> running out of battery, right? Ah. Uh, yeah, the next, next one, one is positivity. So basically, if you ask somebody like an entrepreneur, actually, I can put it the other way around. I've never seen a pessimistic, negative, successful entrepreneur. That's interesting, actually. You know, me and Mo were having a talk about this the other day. I was, I was thinking, like, because I'm just playing devil's advocate here, yeah? A lot of people say that positivity, it kind of makes you, not like delusional, but like, you kind of only see the good points and sometimes the bad points is what you need to motivate you. Like for example, if you're like always thinking everything's gonna work out, you may not uh, uh, get all the like safeguards you could set or you know, the safety measures you could take because you're just positive. But what do you think? You think positivity is the only way? 100%. I think because there's two ways of looking at problems. One is as a problem and an obstacle or yeah. you look at it as a challenge and then as an opportunity. Because if there's a problem, there's a business. There's no business which is successful, which doesn't solve a problem, right? So if you look at problems as opportunities and challenges you should take, that's 
that's when you actually reach success. So basically you say, for example, when we started our businesses, we always said, let's say in fashion or in automotive. In both of the uh, industries, I've started successful companies, right? Yeah. And in automotive, for example, I didn't have any clue. So I didn't say, oh, how do you buy and sell cars? Right? That's not the question I asked. I said, What's the how should we buy and sell cars? Right? How should the industry be? So basically, you look at how the optimal world should be. Right? And then you build processes based In on... In 30 the minutes. That's the only that way. Was the, I thought because that was... A, I, I looked at selling used cars was a problem. Long issue. Right? Very long. Broken experience. Extenuating. So what did I do? I said, why can't we do it in 30 minutes? And that's how selling cars was born. So... Possibility. Yes. Well, uh, I think just hard work. I mean, it's a, it's a basic one to say. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer, but there's no one that's really made it without work ethic, you know? Yeah, you hear it all the time, but it, to be honest, if you have that, to be honest, the only thing you have is the only thing you need sometimes. Yeah. If you can just work hard day in, day out. Hard work beats talent. When talent Facts. doesn't work hard. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next caption. Yes, sir. <laughs> Guys, I make most captions if you don't know. Yeah, some of them. <laughs> the, ones that good sound, ones. the ones that sound really like egotistical. Egotistical. <laughs> Ahmed, my favorite position, CEO. <laughs> Ahmed. <laughs> Okay, next one. This is I'd a collection say. of like Mimi quotes. Mimi, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. Every weird caption I have on my Instagram is probably written by him. <laughs> but I saw it as like a flex, but now it's turning into an insult. So, yeah. anyways, I'll just say the next one before it gets yeah. too insulting. Next one, I'd say budgeting. I think if you want to be successful in life, you need to know how to budget, how to how to spend the money you have, how to how much to invest of the money you have. Like investing is obviously a different habit, but just in terms of budget, in terms of one habit, budgeting, you know? You know where your money is going every day. Track your expenses, you know? See how much, you can, how much you're making and where your money is going. Next. Because it's kind of unfair because I've written a book just now, right? Yeah. It's not out yet. When it's out, you need to link and buy. Can you pre-order it? No. You can not pre-order yet. it, but the link is not out yet. So you okay. have to be a bit uh, patient. But I have very organized thoughts around this question. That's why I can answer it easily. So the next one is reputation. Reputation. I mean, there's a few others. Why I say reputation is because successful entrepreneurs, they value their reputation so much that they guard it, right? So basically, how do you build reputation? What is reputation worth, right? So I analyzed, for example, the last 500 years, actually thousands of years, where, but the, the focus was on the 500 years, who were the most influential people in the world, right? And then figured out, okay, in which areas they were, and the details are in the book. But generally, you can figure out that all of them have something in common. They have very strong financial support, right? Scientists, entrepreneurs, even the politicians. We all need money. How do you get financial support, right? By people investing into you. Either they invest money, they invest time, so they become your circle, and you cannot attract investors if you don't have trust, right? And trust you, least reputation. If you have nothing to lose, that's a problem. But if you have your reputation to lose... Then people know you, you're, right? you're, your bum is so, on the line. So I was young, right? When I came to Dubai, I was 24, right? And my first company, I raised $1.9 million, which is not a lot. I mean, it is... It was lot. at that time. For, for me, you. as a yeah. fresh grad student, it was a lot. And then later on much more so why did i continue to get financial support is because i valued my reputation and i would never cross the boundaries of ethics you're a man of principles and that's another thing so you basically have to stick to if you promise something you better make sure you you keep it because you'd rather not promise it. Yeah, yeah, yeah if i could give you one advice it's keep your promises if you, if you break that you're not only breaking that promise you're breaking your entire reputation for the yeah Promise less, over deliver. Trust is like a, a, a paper, you know? Once you crush it, even if you open it back again, it's never the same, you know? It's never that clean, crease free paper anymore, you know? It always has like dents in it and stuff. I'd say also next habit, in my opinion, discipline. It's yeah. something I've learned to, like seeing these two. They're always, and that's even like something like when you say you promise, even not only for other people, even to yourself. When you promise yourself that you're gonna do something, like let's say, if I tell myself tomorrow I'm gonna go to the gym, if I don't go to the gym tomorrow, 
I'm gonna my my body will know like my brain will know that okay when Avan makes promises to himself it's not serious so the next time I say I'm gonna go to the gym tomorrow my brain already my brain is not preparing for it they know Ahmed is just saying that Ahmed always says it's like the boy who cried wolf the wolf 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 and then when the wolf's there nobody believes it anymore because you're so used to promising yourself and then lying to yourself so you need to have discipline and I think discipline is one of the biggest forms of like self love that you can do if you can tell yourself that I'm not gonna have this coffee now. I'm gonna have it later and you delay that gratification. Some people may say you're being hard on yourself, but I think that's self-love. You're telling yourself that my goals in the future are more important than what I, than my Netflix show that I wanna watch today. My goals in the future are more important than chilling with my friends and going to a party. Alright, Ahmed. Ahmed, get to the serious questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was going off on a tangent. Yeah, you went, you went off. So no, okay, that, that's, okay, enough habits. What's the next question? Okay. Come on, Ahmed, we need some juiciness in this topic, man. Okay, so again, I wanna start with you. Let's get right into it. You're a man with your hands in probably hundreds of different women. pots. <laughs> what women? <laughs> Wait, I'm good. Uh, I just had to say that. Just, not women, not women. Bro, you, just, you set me up for that line. <laughs> Guys, I don't know why Moe said that. Sagan's actually very strict. Very strict on the subject. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, Sagan. Sagan is a man with his hand in many different pots. And he's doing so many things right now. So, let's jump into some of the different things you're doing and your philosophy about why you're doing so many things at the same time. <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing so many different things. I am actually focused. Yeah. Uh, so, one is investing. Yeah. But within investments, I do many things. That's true. But I'm focused on investing. One thing, I invest in medical research. That is on my philanthropy part. But I do invest into startups, right? Startup. That with Startup Hero, I do invest, so I have, I don't know, just today I did three startup investments. Uh, mostly, actually, almost exclusively all tech companies, wow. all tech based companies. Nice. Uh, consumer facing, so this is what I'm doing. Uh, you have the business in Dubai, Sell Any Car. Yeah, and then I'm operational, obviously, as the CEO of the Sell Any Car group. And Kaisha, which is the same version of Saudi. Which belongs to the group, exactly. Um, and you have the studio in your office. I do have a music and video production company too. Music yes. and video production. I just wrote a book. Wrote a book. Yes. Author. Yes. Uh, Influencer, some might say as well. Uh, by the way, guys, I just want to say this before I continue. He actually wrote the book. So it's not like, I know a lot of people like, they get people to write it for them and then they, they claim to write it. Like guys, I was once driving by the main road in Dubai, Sheikh side, and I looked, it was like, 10 p.m. and he was sitting inside his office. Like you can actually see his office from the main road in Dubai. And I had to give him a call, like, yo, it's 10 p.m. Why are you in your office? He was like, I'm writing my book. And I was like, just sitting there writing. I was like, are you kidding me? It's 10 p.m. Go home and relax. But he was actually writing. Right, it, took, it took one and a half years. One and a half years. So to write one that. year I was thinking about it. I was just jotting down notes. And then actually one and a half years I was really writing. It's around 300 pages, so it's a lot, right? I'm buying the book. Support, yeah, once you know? it's out, so for sure, me too. I'm gonna frame. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a library here at the back, and I'm just gonna stock it with Sagan's books as like the permanent backdrop for my podcast. I like that. <laughs> Anyways, so anything, any future plans? Oh wait, let's talk a bit about time management. Sorry, time management. You're doing so many different things. How do you manage your time? Prioritization. It's very simple. I think uh, it's clear. Everything we have is 24 hours a day. So what I always do is I call this allocation of mental energy. It's very sim simply explained. So it sounds complicated, but basically means, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, we have approximately two hours of mental capacity where we can do peak performance, right? Then we have another three hours of high performance times, and then we have the rest is medium to low. So what people do is they leave this allocation of this energy you have just All to over fade, the place. just to fade. What I would do is I would really manage that. So you say, look, when I have peak performance energy, my mental capacity, or you, you can call it your cognitive bandwidth, that's when I will focus on my plans and crises. Right? But how do you know when, when's that time? So basically you can, no, you can, when you, people are usually, when you feel fit, right? 
It's basically an hour or two after you woke up. Usually that's when you that's sleep. That's for right? classic growth. If you're a night owl, maybe it might be at 1 a.m. But I don't think it's very productive because most of the people will be sleeping. So when you were really collaborative and when everybody's awake and you just woke up maybe an hour or two ago, that's probably peak performance. Yeah. But you'll feel it. It goes with brain waves. If you want to go right, into details, right. you can do that. I don't want to go into this. Yeah, so generally, yeah. you put those peak performance times into the crises and plans. What right. is a crisis? High importance, high urgency. What is a plan? Right? High importance, low urgency. Right. This is basically where you put your peak performance time. And then when you want to chill with friends, right? That's also important. That is low to medium mental energy. For example, now, this is now evening, late, right? I did all my meetings today. I did all the stuff I do. You're done now with, Yeah, now I can, I don't need to have peak performance. I just have low to medium and that's perfect so you don't waste time yeah but your low to medium performance is like high performance for average <laughs> I, I have a question okay so i know saigon does a lot of investing but is there one investment you missed out on that oh, really really so many no but like what's the worst one you missed out on <laughs> that's a good question the worst investment like that could have really made you an extra hundred million or something you know? extra or million, a billion, you know? <laughs> And I know he has a few ones he missed out on because I've been with him for years. I mean, I'm not going to mention the company name, but look, last year, if I would have put $50,000 only, it would today be $5 million, right? Oh my and God. That's, and it's just growing. That's 100x. Jeez. And that is, the company is just picking up so fast. But and you had the opportunity you know, like in front of you? Look, don't, go, don't look back. Right? Positive, positivity, optimism. So what I did is, I missed out on that company. But you went. And today, I invested into the same copycat in Australia, Japan, and Canada. Wow, nice. So basically, I said, okay, I you missed out. You learned from that. <laughs> I, I missed out in that country, but I'm going to do it in another country. And I, okay, I know, okay, I know this sounds really weird to say, guys, but sometimes... You can have the same idea, but if you apply it to a different region, it can do just as well. So like you said, it's a copycat company in different regions, guys. And just because it's a copycat doesn't mean they can't do just as agree. good, if not possibly better sometimes. Yeah, 100% agree. Because I mean, now, now you have previous I data. all the things. What my biggest problem was, and you can ask many investors, selling too early. Selling too early. Yeah. It's so crazy. Like I sell and then... Wait, so you had the money there and you removed it and then no, it could have... No, was another company. Okay. So basically I had, I had a company, I had shares in the company and it was doing okay, right? So I sold yeah. during the opportunity and then last year they sold for $360 million. Oh my oh, God. I was like, no! Like, I had I had a significant share, so basically it it happens. So selling too early is probably one of the biggest mistakes. But I'm not really uh, regretting that. There's but guys, so many other every day there's an opportunity. And and that's the thing, guys. Sometimes people always look at it as like, oh my god, we missed out on this and this. But number one, you don't know the outcome. And I and I want to go to crypto when I talk about this, right? Yeah. Everybody looks at crypto, Dogecoin. A thousand X what it was or yeah. or you know like all these coins are flying up in price but there's also a thousand stories of a thousand coins that dipped it's very easy to go in the FOMO and be like look at this guy he, he yeah. doubled his money tripled his money and be like but you forget about how many people lost exactly. there's, there's like a thousand old coins that lose money every day right? yeah. you just focus on Dogecoin, Shiba, Safe Moon. Yeah. You know, like the if you look at the coins five years ago there was a lot of coins at that time that people were like this is the future this is the future and nobody even knows them today yeah so um, and that's, that's called like, an impact bias. So you basically overestimate the the sensation of happiness. Yeah, it's like hype. It's like a facade. Right? And it's a bubble. You, I, I don't look. I don't get. Uh, I don't regret not investing with the things I don't understand. Right? Yeah. If I don't understand the, what I call the value me creation mechanism, and I didn't invest and it blew up, I, I, I don't regret it because. You know, you don't know I what it was. Yeah, I didn't understand it. But if it's something I really understand, I had an opportunity. I usually say I need to have three things, right? I need to know the founder, I need to know the business model, and I need to know the region. At least two of those. Yeah. Right? Three is perfect. If I have at least two, so if I know the founder and the region, I'm happy not knowing the business model. Or if yeah. I know the business model and the region, I'm happy if I'm not really familiar with the founder. So two of those three. But if I don't know anything, right? I don't know the founder, I don't really understand the business model and I don't know the region then I don't know. And guys, sometimes like, and sometimes it's not necessarily you're too early to sell, okay guys, so I want to say one thing, um, sometimes when companies sell, they, they usually sell to a bigger company, that's, that's how they can afford they to buy it, right? right? 
but sometimes let's say whatever value this company had because the bigger company acquires it they instantly become worth a lot more so I'll give an example guys uh, a lot of you may know this but Saigon uh, was a shareholder in soup.com massive shareholder, and they right. sold for about a billion dollars to Amazon but of course the second they sell to Amazon it's gonna be the company is gonna be worth three four X because yeah. now you have a parent company worth 200 that everybody million. knows established but multinational so of course the value is going to go up so now let's say for example if we go back and say let's let's say now soup.com which is now amazon a if that's worth four or five billion now that doesn't necessarily mean they it's sold too early i tell you something it's created a lot of millionaires not only like the the, the top level management but also amazon had a really good uh, fba amazon fba no Okay. Amazon had during the acquisition a very good principle. They, they gave everyone shares. Yeah. Amazon shares. No way. And this is three years ago, right? No and way. And then all those Amazon shares, they're restricted stock units, so RSU. So they basically gave it to them and said, You have to uh, hold on. To motivate them to stay. And these shares, obviously, you see what happened to Amazon. Oh, so they've all been going exactly. up. Exactly. Oh, wow. So if it, if it was a few hundred thousand dollars, they now are worth maybe, wow. maybe a million. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So this whole deal created really a lot of, so first of all, it was perfect for consumers, right? Having Amazon in our region is really uh, important. Yeah. It was perfect for the uh, employees, but it was perfect for other entrepreneurs because we kind of showed, look, you can make great deals here in tech. Yeah. So others get more investment. Plus fun. Yeah. Okay. Also, what Mo was saying is interesting as well because you know Mo was saying that even if there's a, if there's someone that already exists, let's say you want to create a business and somebody's already created it, it really doesn't mean that your opportunity is gone. You know? I mean, I've, I've okay, I've done this multiple times in my YouTube type of stuff, and I think Saigon's also applied that to a few businesses, and it has worked. You know, because sometimes it's regions are missing out on that business, so it's an opportunity to bring it here. You know? So the most successful companies in the world are all implementations yeah they're not innovations right they're not inventions so I really believe that the best uh, companies are founded by best implementers not inventors yeah like Google is not an invention Facebook is not an invention like all the like how many search engines have like before there's, Google there's Yahoo so is popular many. like sell any car is not an invention yeah. we have innovated within the business model right, so right. we have we have Invented processes which are better, right? You don't need to be the but first. But we were not the first company. Not the pioneer, cars, yeah. right? We were not the first company sell to fa sell fashion online. In the Middle East, we obviously imported an idea, but then we adapted it to the region. So, uh, first of all, even if you were an inventor, right? Yeah. Tell me a company, and usually that's the, the, a minority of companies which really have a first mover advantage. Like imagine you just invent something. As soon as you hit the market, right, right? Three months later, six months later, somebody else knows your business. Yeah. So the, what what type of uh, first mover advantage do you have? Three to six months, yeah, you can yeah. easily catch up. So I think bad execution, right, can easily be overtaken by a, a better execution, right. a better implementer. I want to hear. I want to hear. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah. I want to hear a story from, from your life growing up that's like inspirational and from you as well. A story. But you start. Right. Bro, you're, you're a motivational speaker. You should have these at the tip of your tongue. <laughs> motivational speaker. No, like, I mean, that's what you do talk. You do talk. So, what do you want to know? Like, maybe a story from childhood. Maybe you have something on your mind that's like a funny story that, like, you went through. A funny story? Yeah. I have a That lot you went through. With a bit of a meaning. <laughs> I tell you, I tell you something. I think okay. this is not funny at all. It's actually the opposite of funny. But it tells you what, what drives me. Right. Okay. So when I was eight years old, my sister was born, and then five months later, she uh, had a seizure, and I I saw her in the kitchen, oh, no. and she was completely blue. Right. So yeah. I was eight. You're eight, eight years old. I was eight and a half. Yes. If she was five months old. And then I said, uh, what's going on? So I screamed, my mother came, and then they left. And they spent two years in hospital, right? Your sister spent two years two in hospital? Two years in hospital, and she diagnosed with epilepsy. And then I said, okay, when I was 10 approximately, I said, okay, how can I solve this problem? And I said, I'm going to just make so much money yeah. that I can buy her health, right? That's how a 10-year-old thinks. So I said, I'm gonna become a professional football player. 
<laughs> right? Because yeah, that's how, that's how, that's how, that's how you can make money. Yeah. Right? So I worked and I played uh, until the highest league, right? right? And I figured out you can't really make that much money. It's got. I mean, if you're the 500th best football player in the world, yeah, you might make a couple of million. And only for 10 years, like your prime years. Unless you're the best the number in the world, one, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's very And that's also like, I'm gonna be honest, Ten years. genetics to a little bit, you know? Yeah. And a lot, it's very. It's a lot more than it's, just it's work. It's hundreds right? of millions of kids who want to become yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're number 500 as an entrepreneur in the world, you're a multi billionaire. So basically, I switched to that, and I'm shortcutting a lot here, right? So yeah. There was a surgeon phase as well, I know about that. Exactly. So basically, I then said, wow, um, this should drive me. Right? You can't buy health, yeah, but you can buy medical research. Yeah. You can invest into that. And that drives me because that's something which is larger than just making money. But that must have been really sad, huh? <laughs> it is still sad. Huh? And we achieved a lot in the meantime. Right. right? So she's seizure free now. Uh, is she okay? Now she, I mean, there's, there's, there's levels to it, right? So she's seizure free. She has less uh, side effects of the medication. So we achieved that. But generally, if I give you tips, so basically, what's the purpose? Like, why are you, what are you striving for? Is it the, what is your then what? Right? That's your biggest goal. Yeah, I mean, if it's your house, then I can ask you, then what? Right. Right, and you say another house, then what? A private jet, yeah, then what? So what's the last then what you answer? And that is the ultimate purpose. And that is curious as you. For me, yes, but for everybody else. They have their own different purpose, else. right, exactly. yeah. yeah. What's your purpose? Ah. Uh, well, do you know it yet? Maybe some people I, don't know I don't, it. I don't yet. think I necessarily know it. Like, I think for me it was more like, um, I think there was just a phase like, guys, so I don't know if you know this, but at one point my sister worked, she did real estate and stuff like that, so she was actually really supporting the family, you know? And at one point the work wasn't as good anymore, but I'm not going to say we were broke or anything. The market you know? was not. The market was down, so we ended up moving back to doing our studies. So like 2006, the 2006-8, 2006 my sister did real estate. Then you had the whole Lehman brother crash, which was like a global crash. Real estate so crash, So yeah. when the real estate crash, <laughs> what was it? Lehman, Lehman. Lehman, yeah. Lehman whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the made, market crashed. Yeah, yeah, market crashed. And all, after that, we were just going off kind of like savings, but she made a really good amount of money. And then after that, I think it was at one point where... That's when she bought the hurricane, right? No, no, so, yeah, no. When the crash happened, we went to UK, we did our studies, and then when she came back, she bought the hurricane. Anyways, yeah. Uh, so but then she was also doing actually a few things with art, so she was, she, she was a hustler, you know? She, hustler. She, she made money. I remember she even sold two paintings, humongous, humongous paintings, the size of this wall, Whoa. to some guy that lived in Emirates Hills, which is like the most expensive area. Wow. And by the way, the guy, he cut 5,000 because she didn't deliver it to him. <laughs> So like, you know, what? These, these business guys, they're, they're strict, they're strict you know? yeah, they're, yeah. guys, so that's it, even though it's like, she was selling to very rich people, like, they do cut you off if you don't, like, you know? <laughs> so anyways, continue what you So she was hustling, and at one point I realized, like, we were just, there was not much happening, and like, obviously the savings are decreasing, so I just... Yes, step was, up. Yeah, so we were like, planning, are we gonna stay here, are we gonna move, and, it, and it's expensive, you know, like, especially if you're trying to live like a pretty big life like we do, so... That's when I really was like, okay, you know what? I'm the guy in the house, I'm like 20 years old now, let me start doing something. Yeah. So that's when I did. That must have been a lot of pressure. That's when you met me, right? Yeah, I, I think I met Saigon like a year later. So Saigon saw like the videos, like, where, who is this kid that just started blowing up on YouTube? And, and I said YouTube. the same thing. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people, because I was probably like, not the first, but like. You were the first. I'll no, say no, no, it. No, no, I wasn't the first. I, I know there was a lot of. You were the first good one. <laughs> the first, but possibly good one. And I remember at the time there was people who were like, I remember there was other YouTubers that I'd compete with. I was like, he just hit 5,000 subscribers. I need to hit 5,000. Yeah. But now looking back at it, like, literally, <laughs> I'm not saying that to this anyone. Yeah. None of them passed 100k. The people that at the time I thought I was yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. competing with, but. But it must have been a lot of pressure for you. Like I, I imagine at 20 years old, guys, you're now the man of the house, and you 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 get a lot of more responsibilities yeah. than you thought you'd ever have. You know, and you have to step up. And some people, you you know, some people they crack. You know, they get the weird. But you you manage to handle. Yeah, the and, I, and I think especially with social media nowadays, you get a lot of backlash. A lot of backlash. You know, especially. Like people, I guess they don't understand it because they saw us with money, but it's like, why do you have money but you're trying to make videos for money? But right. they don't realize the circumstances. Well, yes, we had the savings. We but had now, money, but now it's, there's no new sources. There, there's no new sources and I don't want to just sit and rely on money. And that's, okay, this is another topic I want to get on. It's like, you know when they say kids that come from a rich family, like they've got it easy? Well, yes, but if they choose not to work, it's different than if a rich kid starts working. I right? heard a statistic. Um, 
uh, the average uh, wealthy family loses majority of its wealth by the third generation. <laughs> Probably true. true. Yeah, that's what I heard. Because I guess you know when you when you don't have the when you when you if you if you're just that person that's just gonna rely on 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 your parents, then you're not gonna step up. You know, like how yeah. you did. So yeah, it's good stuff. First generation millionaire. <laughs> so I can say. <laughs> I don't even know what that word really means. It's like the first person in your family to be a millionaire. That's correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll try to. <laughs> we made it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We really appreciate it. And uh, let us know your thoughts down below in the comments. Check out their social medias. And yeah, anything, anything you want to say? Any last words? Um, hopefully, guys. Last word of advice. And by the way, guys, okay. self-made millionaire. I swear, I'm not even saying this, guys. But Ahmed is probably one of the biggest hustlers I know for his age. Like he, he moves and he works and... Okay guys, a lot of you might know not know this, but Ahmed has actually made me six figures himself. You've put six figures in my pocket. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that guys, so I actually do a lot of work with Ahmed, so... Facts, Ahmed has put six figures in my pocket <laughs> and about five figures in his own, you know? Because business goes both ways, right? So... So, no TV. <laughs> so yeah, everyone needs. Uh, that's what I'm saying. For his I age, he does a lot of work. So you I, know, when when you hang out, when you hang out with, if, if you hang out with five successful people, you'll be the six. You know, and if you hang out with five uh, <laughs> useless people, you'll be the six. You know, <laughs> but I really appreciate uh, Mo Sagan and Mo especially because really he helped me out a lot uh, with a lot of advice. I really, bro. If I didn't know you, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'd be working this hard day to day out. Guys, I feel like Sagan passed it to me. I passed it to Ahmed, and it's like it's going down. It's you know, going everyone down, has. Yeah. So I'm Sagan's prodigy, and Ahmed's my prodigy. Yeah, so it's like yeah. it's going down. Yeah, if you find somebody, hang out with successful people. They'll, they'll teach you. You know, yes, successful, sir. hardworking, ambitious people. That's who you need to hang out with. Sagan, any last words? Any piece of advice for you right now? Of course. I don't. I wouldn't call it my last words. It's really sad. <laughs> last words. <laughs> last any words last words? <laughs> After Ahmed's interview, Saigon. Saigon had his last words. No, no, last words of the video. Guys, subscribe and like this video. I think that's my last words. Nice. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Peace out. High five. High five. I appreciate those kind words. Take care. See you guys. <laughs>